Hi, Richard here at Bear Claw Knife and Shear. So you're at your favorite neighborhood knife store and you're looking for a really good set of knives. How do you tell if the knives you're looking at are good or bad? Well, we're gonna unwrap that right now. So choosing knives is a very individual thing. There's a lot of considerations and a lot of give and take when it comes to knives. First thing that we want to look at is the four properties of every knife, the way we compare one knife to another, and that's going to be in the steel. Because steel is really the first thing that we look at when we're comparing one knife to another. The steel is the first and most important thing you should consider. There's four properties to every steel, toughness, corrosion resistance, edge retention, and sharpenability. For some people, sharpenability is the most important thing. They want to be able to sharpen it easily. For others, they hate a knife that will rust, where other folks don't really care. I mean, they can take care of the knife they know how. Uh, for other folks, and for most folks, edge retention is really the most important thing because they want a knife that holds an edge a long time. So when you're shopping for a knife, you've got to consider what's most important to you, toughness, corrosion resistance, edge retention, or sharpenability. Then take a look at what kind of steel is in the knife that you're looking at and make sure that that satisfies your needs. So for everyone, that could be a little different. So you have to decide for yourself what's most important. Now we've talked about steels quite a bit on this channel and we're gonna talk about them a lot more because it is the first and most important thing we consider when choosing our knives. Uh, we might even visit some steel companies and see how they make knife steels. Uh, but for right now, you just gotta choose the type of steel you like or take a look at the knives you want and make sure that they satisfy your needs. When you do that, then you want to take a look at everything else. So of course, steel is the most important thing that we look at when we're looking at knives. It's the first thing we consider. Four properties will help you in doing that. But once you decide that the knives you're looking at has a steel that you're just gonna work for you, then you wanna look at fit and finish. How is the knife actually made? Does it have gaps in certain places where some materials meet others? Is, are there gaps where food can get in there? If you're, if you're seeing a lot of gaps, probably not the best knife. Uh, does it feel smooth? between the bolster and the handle material? Does it feel smooth in here? Does it feel finished in here? Or is it really rough? Or are there areas that are going to really cause problems uh, while you're working with the knife? Is everything shiny that's supposed to be shiny? Is everything brushed finish that's supposed to be brushed finish? How does the knife actually look? Fit and finish. How does it look? Does it look like a well-made knife? If it looks like a well-made knife, you've got a better chance that it is. Next consideration is going to be the handle material. Uh, now the handle is, I mean, it's a handle. What can you say about a handle? You can get pretty fancy in a handle. For instance, this is a beautiful Mayabi uh, knife. Uh, it's got a burled maple handle on this particular knife. They're beautiful and they look great on the countertop. Now functionality, Anything will pretty much work because we generally use a pinch grip here on most of the chef's knives and Santoku's. But, you know, the handle, that's where the beauty comes in. That's where the artistry comes in. And you want to make sure that it's a handle that's going to hold up for you, but also that it's a handle that's going to look good on your countertop because you got to look good while you're cutting stuff. Another consideration is the feel of the knife. How does it feel in your hand? You know, a lot of people balance the knife and they try and balance it here and they think the balance should be in the middle. Well, that's not necessarily true. Some people like a, a blade heavy knife, some people like a handle heavy knife. Balance is, isn't really a first consideration. It's way down the list for me. I'm really concerned about when I hold the knife, the way that I hold the knife when I prep food. When I hold the knife, I want it to feel good in the hand. Does it feel like it's a knife I want to do a lot of work with? Because if you're getting a nice set of knives, it means you're a pretty serious home chef and you want your money's worth. The knife has got to feel like the knife you want to take home and use every day. So feel the knife, imagine yourself using it. As a matter of fact, you can even ask the uh, store that you're shopping at to get a little fruits or vegetables that you can cut up or bring your own. If you're doing some serious knife shopping, go get some tomatoes, get some celery, get some cucumber, bring it to the store and say, hey, I want to try out some knives. We're thrilled when folks do that. So yeah, feel the knife. Make sure it's going to have the feel that you want. And feel all the knives in that block that you want to buy. Or if you're just buying open stock, an individual knife, just try it out. Take it for a test run. See how it works. And then last but not least, well, not quite last. We have one more consideration. But price. Pricing is probably something we should talk about. Knives, 
prices vary widely. Uh, you can get knives pretty affordably. I mean, uh, for a really good set, a small knife block set, you want to be in the four or $500 range. I know that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for me too, but you want to get your money's worth. You don't want to buy knives all the time. You want to buy a great set of knives that last you a lifetime. So you want to kind of start there and, and then it kind of goes up from there. So it's a consideration, but you can get into thousands of dollars with knives. So you want the price to be worth what it is you're paying for. You, you want to know that you're not getting ripped off. And a lot of your trust of the people that are working in and running the knife stores where that's going to come in. Their job is to wade through all the junk out there, all the overpriced knives out there and, and stock knives that are worth the money you're paying for it. And that's our job. That's our job to do. So if you're buying a $100 knife or you're buying a $300 knife, the $100 knife is never gonna be the same quality as a $300 knife. But at least at $100, you know you're getting your money's worth at a $100 knife. And you know if you pay $300 for a knife, you're getting a $300 knife. That's the job of the store that you're shopping at. Do you trust that store? If not, go somewhere else. If they're trying to pass off not so good knives to you for a high price, you, you may want to go somewhere else. You can't get that kind of service online. And we have an online store too, bcknife.com, shameless plug. But you can't get that kind of customer service, that kind of experience online that you can in the store. Come down to a knife store, go to your local knife store. You're welcome to come and see us. Talk about price with them. You want to be in the price range you can afford, but at the same time, if you can't afford a good knife, wait, save your pennies, spend a little more. I'm telling you, it's gonna be worth it in the long run. The last consideration, and this is gonna be it for me, this is a short video. The last consideration is where is the knife made? You know, knives are made all over the world. We deal with uh, knives that come from 30 plus different countries from around the world. It's a world economy now. So you can't just say knives from here are good or bad or knives from there are, are good or bad. Pretty much you can get good and bad knives from everywhere. Just because it's US made doesn't necessarily mean it's good. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. The same thing goes for China. You know, it used to be everything we got from China was terrible. Now that is not the case. This is a good example of that Kang Shan. It's a very, very nice knife. This is made with a powdered steel. Uh, we really love these knives. They would serve you very, very well. Uh, and they come from China. Now they're working on building a manufacturing facility uh, here in the US, actually down here in Texas and Austin. And uh, they're working on that. They're gonna try and manufacture here. But uh, even if these come from China, they're, they're very good knives. Now, if you are concerned about the world politics that are going on right now, if, if, if you don't want to buy anything from a particular country, man, I get that. I understand that. So tell your knife store that that's the case. Tell them, I have people come in here all the time and say, I do not want to buy anything from this country. And that's great. I mean, that's put your money put your money where it makes a difference. If, if you don't want to buy from a particular country, you let us know, let your knife store know, and then they won't direct you to those particular knives. But as far as quality goes, as far as getting your money's worth, you can't exclude certain countries. China's certainly one of them. Uh, there's other countries too that are coming up with some very nice stuff. So, uh, you know, it, if it matters to you, mention it when you're first going to look at knives. If it doesn't matter to you, then don't be afraid to look at knives from pretty much any country because you can get some great knives from the pack rim from all over the world, really. So uh, that pretty much concludes it for us. Thank you for watching this video this week. Make sure you give us a great thumbs up there. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Ring the bell and uh, we sure would love to see you on the next video. Uh, we got some great ones coming up this summer. So uh, I'll see you then.